Hello, everyone. This is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State, and this is the introduction for drawing for designers class. Um, so today we're going to uh, do another um, freehand sketching exercise. We're going to draw a cube with some parts cut out. Um, and before I do that, though, I'm going to talk a little bit about the two assignments after that, which um, are already in an existing uh, in an existing video in uh, in YouTube, and that's this video called uh, it's a little old, two thousand eleven, but it's still pretty good, and it's called just simply um, yeah, Mel Carton and um, axonometric and orthographic. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll draw uh, if you have a Mel Carton at home, one of these little guys. Um, that would be great. I painted this one gray, uh, so it'd be easier to see. Uh, we're gonna draw. We're gonna sketch different views of this uh, milk carton, and we're also gonna do um, an uh, axonometric or isometric view. Okay. So I'll just quickly go through the uh, uh, the handout. That's actually part of that assignment. Of those two assignments, just to give you sort of a little bit of a heads up. Okay. So it starts out with a quick uh, review of the different types of projections, which we saw earlier, um, and lays out how the drawings should look. Um, now, the, the video from 2011 has a lot of references to old I learn and assignment stuff, like the points and the deadlines and whatnot, okay? So just you know, ignore that. And the thing you need to focus in that video, it's not that long, it's about 20 minutes. Um, is these two parts. One where we show the different views of the um, milk carton, orthographic views, and the other where we show the milk carton in axonometric or isometric view. Okay, so that'd be maybe this view, and then maybe let's see this view. Okay, so just focus on that. I mean, the whole video is good in general, but, um, and this is what it will look like. So this is freehand, um, although you need to figure out what the proportions are, and you might have a different carton that is, you know, perhaps tall, perhaps short. Um, so do several, you know, of course, don't think, oh, okay, I'm gonna do it and boom, it's gonna be perfect, right? Even if it's a sketch in terms of the proportions, you might get them wrong. So you need to do another one and another one. Um, but this is roughly the layout of that. So this would be the front, the right side view, the left side view, the back, the top, and the bottom, okay. And the uh, if this is the front, the right side view is the one that you see if you go around, if you were a person going around and so and looked at it, okay. In this case, they happen to be the same, but uh, in another object, it might be different. So let's see, yeah. And then for the orthograph for the axonometric. Um, you know, refer to the drawings that we did before about sketching a cube, and that's your basic, basic module. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly avoid again. Um, we're going to see this again today. Avoid views that are square. Remember, if you have a view that's square. There's no way you can see the others. And as soon as I turn this, none of these is going to be a square on the paper. Okay. Um, and these are just various steps. So again, because that video already exists, I'm not going to do it now. Uh, just simply go to um, see it. Some suggestions about how to hold the pencil and how to move from your elbow and from your shoulder rather than from your wrist. Okay. Uh, there is this part about uh, ellipses and bottles, but you can you can see it now. It's it will apply later to another drawing. Okay. So, uh, and for this quick exercise, I, I got inspiration again from um, this great book from the School of Design in Basel um, that has a nice introduction section. And uh, this is what I have in mind for today, even simpler, okay? Uh, just a cube with maybe one cut out um, or maybe even splitting the cube in two halves, which actually, yeah. Uh, this is a good practice to perhaps, yeah, if we wanted to do a small cutout, like a small step, okay? Uh, okay, uh, just note again that 
one way to do it is to use lighter, uh, harder pencils. I'm kind of lazy and I never do it. I just use the, my hand to be a little lighter and then a little heavier with the same pencil. But it actually um, takes that extra effort out if you do use a lighter pencil for the construction for the beginning sketch and then use a darker pencil. So maybe today I'll try that. Um, it does give the drawing a nice feel. Here they call it, the drawing should represent a free and solid unit and not a flat outline. And I think by that, what they mean is like, these lines are not stiff. They're not, you know, kind of set forever. They're just sort of alive and, and very fresh. Okay. And I mean, you're welcome to do, you know, fancier <laughs> cutouts like this one representing a little church, but, or I don't know, maybe it's a you know, library or a train station. Um, Right. So, and I'll have um, I'll have my cube again. I will have um, yeah my models. Um, I have this model that shows a cube cut into half along the diagonal. Um, yeah, let me just say a few things about the cube first because it's such a simple shape, but it's actually an amazing, amazing shape. Um, and uh, yeah, why well, didn't want to talk about this? Yeah, because actually this will come again, come up again later when we do the cube section project. And that is the, the project where we do um, a cutout of the cube that's a little more complex. This is the more complex version. Um, the simpler version, I don't have in front of me right now, but um, the simpler version will use um, this type of sections. So we cut it here and we'll need to use pieces from the inside here and pieces from the inside here. And this, of course, the inside of a cube this way is really the same as the top of the cube. So that's pretty simple. Um, I just wanna spend one second about this particular section, which is again, cut through the diagonal. When you do that, you get a rectangle that is um, in the proportion of square root of two. One to where square root uh, one to um, square root of two. So if this is one, um, this is square root of two. Okay, and that's a rhombus. And the cool thing about this is that it, it it sort of pops up in, in really cool places, including um, you know honeybees um, hive and the honeycomb structure where the, where the honey is found. So recently I was, I, was, I was studying this and I built myself a little model of the way that the, um, the cells, when you see them from the outside, of course, everybody knows they look like this. They're hexagonal cells and they're prisms, right? They, well, they're prisms. And there is one side and then there's another side. Okay. And, and this is where the honey is. But what a lot, probably most people don't realize is that actually the way the cells are blocked on the inside, it's not flat, but rather has this shape. So in other words, it makes this little pyramidal um, shape. And, um, and one cell on one side actually meets three cells on the other side, okay? Like that, nice little joint. And it's mathematically proven that this configuration actually saves wax and allows for more honey to be stored uh, in the cells. Go figure, the bees are very smart. Um, they also know how to tell the other bees where the food is by doing a dance. I'll talk about this another time. Um, well, actually, no, it's too cool. I'll talk about it now. They do this, this funny dance, it's called the. Uh, dancing bees, I guess. So they go around in a circle. If the food is far away, and I'm really getting sidetracked, but that's okay. Um, so what they'll do is they'll do this circular dance and once in a while they'll come down straight kind of through that circle, okay? And believe it or not, I don't know now, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a navigator, so, but this angle, with the normal is how they tell other bees to go 
to find the food because this is the sun or something like that. So it's, um, they can see the sun through the clouds because they see ultraviolet light. So it doesn't matter if, the, if it's cloudy, they'll, they'll always know what the sun is. Anyway, that's the dancing bees and this is the, the honeybee cell. So we find this rhombus in many other places, um, but this is the most, the coolest one, I think. Okay. This was another thing I'm working on where I made um, what's called the uh, rhombic dodecahedron, which is um, a solid made up of 12 such rhombuses. Okay. Well, let's see if we can. Yeah, let me take what perhaps is a lighter pencil. Let's see, maybe simply HB. Yeah, I think. Well, they're similar. It's just a little. It's a mechanical pencil. Can you see it? Yeah, I guess you can see it. Um, Okay, maybe I'll use this to just get the structure, um, the structure going. So, yeah, we talked about the simplest view being the one where the angles are all the same. Okay, so you should start with that again, um, just because it is the simplest. Let's see if I can find a quick. Yeah. Just like that, right? Sorry about the reflections. Uh, there we go. It's tricky to avoid them, but um, okay. But you can also move it and change these angles, right? One way or the other. Uh, don't do too much, otherwise you only see a, a square. So I'll leave it there, even though it's not really the view you would see, but it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going, I'm just going to try and I'm, draw, I'm going to draw big now. Oh, of course, remember, I'm not going to do it now. Remember to do your title block on the sides, okay? For those of you who might have just joined, refer to the very first assignment where we, we draw a border around the drawing at a half inch, and then we draw a title block here, three quarter inches, okay? So please make sure to include that because um, otherwise it's an automatic D to remember that. So just get into the habit of doing it. Um, okay, so I'm going to now sketch. Yeah, I'm gonna try sketching a cube. Uh, again, if you have time, if you have the patience, if you feel like it, you can also turn the paper so that you always move your hand in the same direction and you just move the paper. And in a way, you know, that is fast, right? Because, because I don't move. Well, it depends. It's definitely useful to do the verticals by turning the paper so you're drawing horizontally um, because it's actually much harder to draw it down like this than to draw across like that. Because again, it's a pendulum and it's, it's much harder to control this pendulum going up and down this way Oops, sorry. Um, because of gravity, right? <laughs> um, so it's it, the gravity part here, it's harder at the top. I think if I go this way, it's all even, right? So again, work from your, you know, work from your uh, work from your elbow, and if and if anything, work from your shoulder, okay, like that. So you really try to not move your pencil, but if you hold the pencil, if you do something else, it's okay. I mean, it's we're not gonna we're not gonna find anybody for um, for doing a different a different way. Okay, um, as long as you get the drawing kind of made right. So, and at this point, I'm not worrying about perspective. Remember, so in other words, I'm not I'm not worrying about doing. A cube in perspective. 
Okay, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Okay, I'm just using everything the same parallel lines. Okay. Um, now, the first thing I would probably want to do, if I'm going to cut out a piece out of this guy, let's say a step, right? A simple step, maybe of a quarter. Um, well, what we need to do, of course, would be if the step is sort of standing up rather than stepping down, um, I would I would try to divide the top of that cube first, right, like this. Now, I'm just eyeballing it now, but in fact, if I didn't do that first, what you could do is draw the diagonals and that would give you the center, okay? So if I were to repeat that here, for example, if I draw the diagonals, I get the center, that gives me the uh, position then to do this other line and also to do this other line. And uh, this I can just do, I'm just gonna do them all on every side. Um, now with this view, we talked about one of the drawbacks is that actually this corner is gonna correspond to the corner behind, okay? So that now if I try to draw this cube a little bit like transparent, it kind of flattens out. Do you notice how all of a sudden it's, it's an hexagon and it's not as clear like what's in front and what's in back, although you can fix that by darkening, uh, of course, some of the lines, right? By the way, yeah, cross your lines. I think it's cool if you cross your lines. Uh, it just makes the drawing a little more interesting. Okay, so yeah, that now looks like it's coming forward. Um, otherwise, what you can do is to change the angle a little bit. Remember, we talked about if I move this down a little bit, this angle, maybe then what I want to do is move this one a little bit up so that I might have something that goes like this. And if I do that, um, I have to shorten this axis a little bit, okay? So perhaps, you know, if this is the front and this is the side, the side is a little bit shorter. flatten it too much. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. It's a little too flat. Um, and once I do that, of course, then if I were to do like a, a um, transparent cube, you can see that, you know, it's, it's more dimensional, right? So the advantage here is everything is the same. Everything is equal. Um, so let's, let's do both. Well, now that I have my grid, I can just simply bring that, that little detail. Um, yeah, so this would be actually oriented like that if I'm, if I'm looking at it this way, right? This would be my cutout. Um, so, well, that's it. Once I, once I do that, then I just, you know, I just bring this down. And again, it's a little flat because of that, you know, because of everything being the same, but still, that's a, it's a good start. So, though I'll have a whole other, um, well, there's already a video about this actually. By the way, most of my videos, well, um, all the videos I've already done are already on YouTube, okay? So please, um, go there and, and browse. Um, but there is one um, that basically repeats the uh, techniques of a guy named Mike Lean. And he talks about, you know, changing your line weight so that it is, uh, you know, a little more interesting. And also perhaps fading your lines a little bit. And also maybe highlighting the corners a little bit, but as you can see, I'm doing it still in a very, you know, organic way. I don't know. That's a, sounds like Whole Foods, but um, <laughs> it's not a great way to describe it. I think what it means is it looks a little more natural. You know, a little more real. Okay. okay. So that's one. So if I were to apply to this, let me let me try. Uh, you'll see how immediately the uh, uh, the shape will have a little more depth, right? 
because of the of the way this angle is going to work. So, so here it's a little bit, um, a little bit like a repetitive thing, um, but that's okay because it, it's good because you know you have this sort of memory, right? Your arm kind of remembers. Oh, okay, I just have to repeat that, repeat that, repeat that instead of switching to other directions before you're done with this. Um, so, yeah. So this would be another one, right? So all I'm asking for this assignment is really that you practice any way you want to, you know, turn your, this would be the most basic one. I'm going to do quickly one like the one that they showed in the book and then maybe one with some diagonals, but, but this would be the minimum, right? Um, and the drawing is nice if you include everything, actually, you know, if you do, of course, now I'm already too tight here for my borders, but that's okay, I need to just go over it. Um, another way to do these lines is to work from your corners going in and then fading when you're in, in the middle of the line, so to speak, right? So if I, you know, it's kind of like you fade out there and you fade out there so that it's a little more interesting again. This pencil now is getting too thick, so. This gadget is really great. If you can find a good sharpener like this, and sometimes you might find these on YouTube, uh, on, on eBay, this is actually the best, suggested again by uh, Mike Lean. They don't make this model anymore. Okay, and let's see. Um, I just remember that there is, um, well, no, I don't want to stop the video now. So there is a there is a book that I'll put a link on in iLearn by um, a book by my teacher from high school. And I actually translated it. It's sort of bootleg translation by the draft translation, but, um, but it will show how to cut these cubes in different ways and it will actually helpful, be helpful for the, um, for the cube section assignment later on, okay? So this is one, let's see, let's try to do a couple of different alternatives now. And then I'm gonna use the light. Um, I brought that up, my teacher, because he has a whole section in the book where he looks at like how many ways can you uh, how many planes are there in a cube that you can possibly cut it? Uh, specifically, how many ways diagonal and how many ways um, in the middle, okay? Just real quick, I'm gonna show you a cube I've made with clay. Um, I have a gadget where I can actually cut this thing in half with a wire. Um, and I showed that by cutting it like this, you could then recompose it. And I forget now what I made it into, but um, yeah. So these are parts inside, right? That we can use to uh, split the cube in different ways. So you could try to sketch, for example, yeah. How do I show these sections? And these will be sections that will be going across the diagonals like that, right? Actually, let me just use a thicker pencil because otherwise we can't see anything. Um, okay, I'm going to do actually now cubes that are, yeah, with the angles a little bit different. And I'll do a few. And now I'm, I'm doing a different sheet, but you know, for your assignment, just the one final, if you want to call it that and turn that in, okay. But um, I'm, I hope you do more sketches, right? On your own, um, like I'm doing now. So for example, I'm gonna to try to, um, if I wanted to do, well, if you wanted to do the step really like a, almost like a podium, you could do this, you could, you could do the cut here, right? Like that. Could 
simply darken it. I'm doing these fast now because, well, it's okay to move your hand fast. But you could take a little more time than I'm taking out to do the video. I just don't want to make the video too long, okay? But um, so that it would be, you know, a little bit more care, you know, careful, perhaps. Okay. So obviously, a cube split like this um, is simply. Yeah, would be a cube that's being cut in half this way, right? And also this way. So once vertically, once horizontally, and where those meet, you know, you get your step, right? So what if this was three times? So if it was three times, you can eyeball a division of three on one of the edges. You could go like that, right? And and here's a nice trick. Once you once you do a set like that of lines to get the other three lines going the opposite direction, you cut through a diagonal and then you find these spots. Um, that gives me the other, the other division, okay? And what did I wanna do? Oh yes, I wanted to do the, the three steps kind of, um, well, I'm gonna do them like this so I can actually see them. Um, so yeah, just just practice, you know, just feel free to um, you know have fun with this. I mean it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, so I would draw then my steps here. And now it gets a little tricky to draw the at the back, but um I would just, you know, try to repeat my lines, pick them up. So, and I do them kind of one by one. And when I'm done with the first, I maybe the next, then I just repeat. Okay, so I'm, I'm always duplicating, you know, from here. And by doing this kind of dry runs, I, I get, again, the muscle memory, very quick muscle memory, muscle working memory, I guess you could call it because it's a few seconds. Not not like um, short term or short term memory. That's more like a day or two, or of course long term memory. But I guess muscle memory does apply to long term too. Anyway, all right. So that's another one. And now, if you wanted to have fun with a uh, a different kind of cut, where you maybe cut with the diagonals, although that's a little more involved, but you could just try and see, see what happens. Let me see, I don't know what I want to do exactly, but, um, but perhaps I want to do, um, well, yeah, maybe I want to do a little house that has like four, a four sided sloped roof, pitched roof, I don't know. So maybe like I do, I just split it into three again, and I do the roof from the top part. So again, I'm, I'm building a grid, essentially, right? Um, so these will go around. And then, um, yeah, and then I find the center here at the top by doing diagonals like this. I mark it. And now what I need to connect is the four corners of my you know, the top of my walls. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, it looks pretty good. Then here it's just a little bit, I got lucky there. Um, it's not so nice when these lines kind of match and all of a sudden everything disappears. But um, so, So that's another version. It's a little, it's it's a, not enough, not quite enough, right? I mean, I wish I could see more. And of course, to do that, I would I would do. Let's see if I could 
more. So I had to, yeah, not really. Depends how tall it is too. Um, in this case, I also see a little bit on the other one, but um, so let's see. Another one could be, and these are more like optional. Okay, I'm just now sort of going through. You know, how how many ways can I skin this cat? How many ways can I? Sorry, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? But um, but it is a saying. I don't know if it's a saying in English. It is in Italian. Well, actually, in Italian, in Sardinian, I don't know if it's in Italian. In Sardinia, we have a saying with this: the tail is always the part, the harder part to skin. Um, okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe I cut off a piece. Um, Maybe I cut off a corner here and I could just try that for now. Just try to see what happens. So let's just say I cut, this will be my center again. And I realize this is now getting a little more complicated, but you could try for fun, okay? So now I'm just cutting off the side here. And what could I do? I don't know, maybe, instead of closing it off here and just leaving a you know a bit cut off from the corner um maybe um maybe i go off to this corner right here so perhaps i do that this is you know my piece that's cut out from my cube just a little bit different looking oops uh, i shouldn't this one is not quite right. I hate to erase. Um, I don't have my eraser now. So let's just say this shouldn't be, this shouldn't be there. Okay, so you can play around. This is a little more elaborate. The one we did earlier is a little, a little easier. Um, Right, and you could simply do like you know a bunch where you just cut off one corner, just like we we we, we said, and uh, that becomes your you know your entire exploration. That could be fun too, right? So you could have one where you cut off this oops this corner. Of course, we get into this kind of optical illusions now, but um, again, changing it a little bit will help. So I'm gonna do that. So that my cutouts, so because it's not symmetrical anymore, um, I don't run into that. This is not good, this should be art. Parallel, see how they're going. Each one their merry way, that's not so good. And these don't look too good because they're a little bit too rushed. Um, but what I was trying to say is you could practice maybe cutting off this corner, right? Or any corner. Um, or you could practice doing the step. And now, now I'm just sketching this, you know, really quick just to show the variations. Okay, it's, this is not, these are not good. Okay, they don't count. <laughs> don't take this as a model for the real thing. I'm just, I'm just quickly sketching them to see what could be, you know, possible variations. Okay. All right. Uh, another thing you could do is to visualize again what those planes are inside the cube. So if I so that 
to visualize, for example, how I cut this, you know, along this face. I could, you know, I might just simply do the diagonal there. You know, and this would be my the part that's cut out. Okay, I could even do it maybe like a step, so that you know it's a step, but it's going diagonally. If you can, if you can visualize that, but. Um, Right. So, in other words, ah, sloppy, sloppy. See what happens when you try to go too fast. Okay, so. Let's see, I think that will be it. I mean, there is enough here to, for you to sort of, um, you know, practice. I mean, if you want, you could even practice subtracting this part. Like if these were a cube, you know, cutting off two parts at the top, right? That would be fairly simple if this is a cube. I shouldn't say fairly simple. If one hasn't done something ever before, it's never simple. <laughs> um, so, but if I wanted to do a roof here, simply a simple roof, just a two-sided sloped roof. Okay, always find that center, right? So that you could find by doing the diagonal that way and then bringing it up. Gives me this point, which would be this point. And then go like that. And this tells you a little bit already how the how the milk carton drawing later will be visualized, right? Like a house. Okay, and that's it. Um, there's something else. Yeah, actually, I took apart one of these. What happened? Oh, sorry. I just touched my keyboard and everything disappeared. So let's see if I can get it back. There we go. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I thought something had dropped. Um, I'm not going to cut to that. Anyway, this is, uh, you know, I flattened out and I'll, I'll, eventually I'll post a video that shows actually how these are made out of a cylinder and folded into the, um, into the box. Um, and we will draw this uh, with all the folding lines, which is a little bit like an origami. Okay. All right. Um, let's take this as the last image. And, um, remember to get yourself some good pencils, you know, some nice soft for these exercises, pencils. And again, just, this is a great brand, Palomino, if you can get some of these. Um, and don't use paint now, okay? Just, just use pencils, okay? All right, thanks again, and I'll see you for the next video and uh, go online and watch the other video about the milk cart, okay?